thanks to all the sponsors for helping to bring this to you. Um, also want to uh, introduce our guest this morning. We're going to have a really good presentation. The guys of Pro. We're going to learn a lot about what I sometimes refer to as not retirement, but commencement. So we're going to, I'd like to introduce Mark Burwell. Mark is the uh, founder and president of Evolutions Group. And Mark is a serial entrepreneur himself. Um, I don't think Mark is ever going to stop doing something. So it's a great model to watch. And uh, if you listen to Mark, you'll hear between the lines just as much as wisdom is what he's expressive in words. So Mark. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. So like I said, uh, Whisper is going to be who you were supposed to have today. I know it's vacation time, so it's maybe a blessing that she'll be here in September. She's really busy with her winery in Morgan Dillon, so uh, we'll be happy to see her now. But uh, the very first, um, when Amy and I were putting Million Cups together, the very first um, presenter we had, I just put my business, kind of my, we'll say part-time business, whatever, out there, the Evolutions Business Group, because I've been in that since 1984. And uh, it's been kind of sitting out there, and so we pulled it off with you, and so that's what you're going to get today. Of course, we just learned about this yesterday, so I'm not going to have a PowerPoint, not a, but I do, I'm going to give you the book, and I do have a one page uh, handout in there talks a little bit about things from my web page and that, so um, you can uh, take a look at that. But I want to ask you today is how many people are watching the Olympics? Okay, what's going on as we speak in the speak? I know. Track and field, right? And that's kind of been my passion. I, I was um, a runner, uh, I'm actually a sprinter. Uh, I had a chance to actually get in the pre Olympic trials um, back in 1972. Um, and I think from that, that some of the takeaways that I'm going to probably talk about a little bit today um, is probably what I'm, I want to show you in my business model or what's with evolutions. And um, I look at, um, when Tony said retirement, um, I remember back in 1964 was when I first got my first paycheck. It was 95 cents an hour, and Medicare was just starting that. In other words, What's this other thing? I said to my dad, I was just 14 years old, well, what's this other thing coming out? I thought you said there was a social security thing, a retirement thing. And of course, when you're that age, you never know what it is. But anyhow, um, 50 years, or 52 years later, you realize, um, do you ever retire? Well, I look at what's going to happen. You haven't seen it yet in the Olympics, but it's called um, the finals. We've been watching the trials. We've been watching as people evolve and hard work, I think the, the, the backdrop of what the announcers talk about, but that's what really you have to look at. And I have looked at my business as we've gone along. Uh, instead of um, even being a CEO and busy through my corporate career in that, I always wanted to have something on the side. It's like almost like running. When you're exercising, you have to make sure there's a couple things. I know Kim knows what one of them is. That is what you put in your body, and the other one is how you operate your body. And it's not just running, it's emotion, all those things. So you have to look at those three things and, and I always thought, well, running was easy um, or, or fitness was easy, but what wasn't easy was um, keeping astute. Because if you're not astute and in the trenches all the time, it really doesn't balance out what you're doing on the rest of your career in that. So I call that kind of what you're going to see the runners do when they take their victory and that is a victory lap. So I, if you're talking about retirement and score, I know, and Amy and I were talking about this a few years ago, it's the Encore Entrepreneurs. If we look at the Kauffman Foundation, they say that what? There'll be more baby boomers, right, Tony? Setting up businesses than there will be the millennials. So what does that mean? Do they want to do that? Well, you have to position yourself, and that's really what I want to talk about with um, called Evolutions was back in 1984, um, I was teaching, I was an adjunct actually at MMTC and at um, several of their uh, UW uh, campuses on small business. Entrepreneur wasn't really a word then, but uh, uh, in, the, in the actual language it, we have it so much today. But um, I look at 32 years of the Evolutions Group and it's still there, but now it's evolving. And it's amazing, um, in 1984, 
when I, when I started, it was positive independent consultants. Well, then in, in 2001, I named it Evolution because I knew that you had to evolve. I knew that business plans and, and venture capital money that I was putting together for two years, I spent full time working with um, Evolution's group, the business plan, the business model, and I looked at probably the best value proposition that I had was to get people to really learn how to evolve with their businesses. So, um, what was that? Well, if you look at your sheet that I have here, I have three components. There's a speakers bureau, there's a survival series, there's executive in residence, and there's a motivation point. And um, um, and in there, they're common sense things. Um, the speakers bureau obviously is, and, and the author of the book. That I gave you really makes you pretty much a person of, of influence. A lot of people, if they're getting towards retirement or they're approaching it, they want to be flexible, you have to figure out how can I really be a person of influence? And part of that is to productize yourself. And to productize yourself, you want to make sure that um, you can do it without a lot of people. I know uh, having to a groom and grow 88 people in an organization as a CEO of a company, um, you, you did a lot of I don't want to say babysitting, but you, a lot of burden came on your shoulders. Well, you can't do that when you're retired. You can't do that. So when you run the race, you won the race, you still want to take a victory lap. It means you're not done yet. So you need to reclaim the fire. You know, Michael Jordan found that out, and that's why he went into baseball and golf. And you see, he maximized out. But what did he do? He came back to basketball, didn't he? So that's what I feel my gear back is to come back to reclaim that fire and reclaim that fire is to give back to the, the colleges, to give back to the ecosystem where you can. Some of it's volunteer, a lot of it's volunteer. Some of it, obviously, uh, you do as an entrepreneur, you know, to make some income as well. So, um, I wanted to have some unique things. The Speakers Bureau, obviously, is something because I uh, became a speaker. Um, survival Series really is more or less geared towards um, doing talks within an organization. But the executive and resident I want to talk about, because that's really what I want your input on today as well, because it's something that I did a lot of back in 2001, 2002, and really done that in a different mode, and I'll show you how that uh, evolves from that. But I was in uh, Russia, uh, lecturing in Russia. It was a trade mission. Uh, it was 10 people in entrepreneurship, 10 people in government, 10 people in education, 10 people in med medicine. And I happened to be working on uh, Evolutions Group to put together um, kind of an executive resident. And I was a CEO. I realized that even after 9-11, there was a lot of people that were downsized. And um, how can some of those CEOs be a part of um, helping uh, uh, actually fit right in and run an organization? And it worked so well that I know Carol Schneider, who is the CEO of SEEK, uh, a major employment firm out of Milwaukee, was very interested. So I worked with her, and she set up some of the model herself, as well as Landmark here in, in, in uh, Appleton. And I know Monica um, uh, set up an accounting division for accountants who got downsized to be kind of accountants in residence. So what it is is basically not just outsourcing, but actually putting them in uh, and uh, placing them in. So um, I had the opportunity to probably work with, I would say, about 20 different companies, nonprofit companies, during that two year period, and actually go in and be their temporary CEO. I figured, well, I remember Uncle being uh, a fire head of a uh, fire captain in Madison. Well, he would sub around the different uh, stations. Why can't that happen with the CEO? Um, uh, or an operations person. We tend to sometimes think in today's world, a lot of the baby boomers I see, a lot of my age too that are retiring, that they want to become consultants. Well, sometimes what's a consultant? And I remember when I would go in and work with a company, I would be like, is he an auditor? Is he a consultant? What is he? What's he doing here? And no, it was actually, I was placed in as the CEO, but to mentor family businesses, Matter of fact, uh, 
closer is one of the biggest firms that I grew had one store that was my main focus. I had equity in the company, but my job was, and I did the same thing with the Madison firm, and another firm in Portland, Sauk City, and Baraboo did the same thing, is to help them and their family groom their children through the business. So you're kind of a mentor in residence, you're kind of an executive in residence, but it's a way that um, we also uh, have the same thing being groomed in the New North, probably a different business model, but it's called Fast Forward. And fast Forward that was established in Ohio, it's been a large part of that, putting some of that together, but it's really more of a hit, hit and run thing than it is actually going in and actually being there full time. So that's really Evolutions Group's main focus, I think, that I spent my time in. It's not the speeches. It's not that the workshops probably got more incorporated into um, uh, some of the classes and different things I've had. But I will say I got tapped on the shoulder. As a matter of fact, I remember uh, teaching some entrepreneur classes here in Appleton back in 2002, I think it was, 2000, yeah, 2001, 2002. And still staying in the trenches, even with evolutions group, but being tapped to start up Urban Hope or uh, eHub as it is, um, and they wanted to grow. They wanted to go into different cities. And so I took that same business model, that Evolution's business model I had, and did the same thing in Canton, New Philadelphia, Dover, Cleveland, Massillon, Ohio, and went in and worked with their executive director and groomed it. Uh, same with Lloyd's of Janesville. Uh, the United Way director became an entrepreneur director down there with Workforce Development, as well as UW Whitewater. Uh, and some of their, what they call the court initiative in Lloyd, with the chamber, Amy Lauenbach. So the same model applied by going in and being not necessarily a CEO, but kind of a mentor or executive in residence. So um, sometimes I think if people have a specific product, it would be better to somehow incorporate that than to actually be a, a, a consultant. So that's kind of what I look at because what evolution is really is, it's, and you can see at the bottom here, is the values of business and its customers are changed from marketing, technology, and lifestyles. It's increasingly important to translate the continuous change into positive and profitable action. Evolution business group addresses the critical needs in order for you to survive. The impact of positioning, relationship marketing, and today's marketplace is very important in order to thrive for the turbulent and competitive times. And that really is a statement that I made back or have had since 2001. So sometimes when you have missions, um, I feel that it's, it's, it's helped that you evolve into um, different things. You still have your your, your, your whole vision and your mission, but it can be done in different categories, different ways, uh, and how that's, that's produced. Um, the other part, uh, the motivation part, motivation really, that division I had, I probably used more, um, uh, probably in the mid, like 2008, 2009, I spoke at a couple conferences in Chicago called a motivational conference, and what it was, was how, what's incentive? And I felt that by uh, going through um, and grooming a business and scaling businesses, what's the number one motivational factor? And HR is struggling so much is that's one thing a CEO is supposed to do, not just be the top salesperson, not be the top negotiator, but also the um, mission isn't just about the customers, it's about the employees. So I found that the neat thing to do is to build that into the business model into um, creating um, a way to, um, what are the best incentives? And I found the best incentive is not cash, not cash bonuses. That just goes back to paying out a utility bill or the casino or the local pub. It's really somehow giving back to the families. If you've got an employee who did a great job, just to send a letter out once a month or whatever to that specific household, household and say, we really appreciate what's happened, the employee that you've got, and here's a, you know, turn it on gift certificate to go, you know, to eat or to take a weekend away and stuff. So, sometimes those appreciation, but there's other incentives, there's safety incentives. 
And what I found is having the group throughout this period of time really meant collecting and cubiting and connecting other people to, um, and it's one of the chapters in my book is called cubiting, is connecting those people together to make sure that um, it's not a referral program, it's just making those connections because that's what obviously what your lean marketing wants to do is reputation referral. So I'm going to kind of leave you with that. And